Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We shall look at it from threefold angle. The first angle is which, mean, which mystery? Secondly, what is the mystery? And thirdly, why is it a mystery? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Which mystery? Let's start with it. First Corinthians chapter 1. The mystery that should be finished. Which mystery? First Corinthians chapter 1 first. If you are there with me, I read verse 18, 19, 20, 21. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Verse 6. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. In a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. Hidden wisdom. Hidden. Decoded. Encoded, I mean to say. Encoded. The hidden wisdom. Which God ordained before the world is ordained unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them, decoded them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched out his ear, the deep things of God. Which mystery, Romans chapter 16. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. Now to him, verse 25, 16 verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the mystery. That mystery that has been hidden from the foundation of the world is reserved unto our glory. Secondly, what is that mystery? Colossians chapter 1. I'm answering it now. We are in the second one now. What is that mystery? Hallelujah. Verse 25 up to verse 29. Where, whereof, Apostle Paul, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, we the Gentiles, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. This is the mystery now. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. The riches 
of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What is it? Which is what? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Whom we preach. Warning every man. And teaching every man in all wisdom. That we may present every man perfect. In Christ Jesus. Finally. Whereunto I also labor. Striving according to his working. Which worked in me mightily. What is the secret? Or what is the mystery? The mystery is Christ in you. A revelation to the Gentiles. Christ in you. The hope of glory. What is the mystery? Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. From verse 1. If you are there. For this cause. I Paul. The prisoner of Jesus Christ. For you Gentiles. I'm speaking this mystery concerns the salvation of the Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, what? How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote before in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of God. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now. It is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What is the mystery? That the Gentiles. That is the mystery. That is the mystery. I have underlined in my Bible. You should underline it too. What is the mystery? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. We are of. I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's unsearchable. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid and coded in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the prince and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory what is the mystery the mystery is how the gentiles how the gentiles have come to be partakers and be fellow heirs with the jews it is a mystery and I need to explain this mystery very well because, because a lot of us just think it is about just going to church. It's not about going to church. Oh. Let's understand what the mystery is so that everybody will know where you are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God always knows from the Gentiles, I mean from the beginning, from the beginning salvation was made to look as if salvation is only for the jews no 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 salvation was also meant for the gentiles that's why apostle paul said this salvation that we are enjoying now the mystery was hidden from the foundation of the world isaiah prophesied it <laughs> blessed be the name of the lord Romans chapter 9 Verse 22 up to verse 26. Apostle Paul, our own apostle. Romans 9, 22. What if God is talking about the sovereignty of God? Willing to show his wrath and to make his power known. Endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. And that he might make known the riches of his glory 
on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory, he had prepared unto glory. Uh -huh. Even us, whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he said also in Hosi, that is Hosea, I will call them my people, which we are not my people, and have beloved, which we are not beloved. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. The Gentiles. So we were in the, we were in the mind of God. There is a way the gospel is, is, is presented as if, as if God just as you not get anybody where Greece have them. These Jews, they go, they don't reject me. So, hey, how go do? Okay, make I go this gentile. Make I go try go this gentile. Through foreknowledge, he had already arranged all. Both Jews and the rest of the world that we shall come under one fold. Jesus Christ demonstrated it. That confirmed. Why the, the Jews still don't consider us? The Serophonician woman came begging for the child to be healed. He said, it's not meat. It's not proper to give the children's meat to dogs. As far as the average Jew was concerned, every Gentile is a dog. And a dog is an unclean animal. Before Jews. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that you should defy the army of as far as David was concerned, see this animal coming to David. Look, defy the army of God. Uncircumcised. As far as they are concerned, salvation belonged only to the Jews. Even another time he sent them out, he said they should not go anywhere else, only to the lost sheep. He said, I didn't come back for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But while he's saying this, Amen. Apostle Paul went deeper. I say, there is a hidden mystery that these people you are calling dogs. So, there's a mystery that they will come into the same fold and be fellow heirs of the same grace that God gave Abraham. Hallelujah. And not only that, they will even occupy a higher position than you, the Jews. That is the mystery. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now why is it a mystery? That's the third one. Amen. Remember that the mystery is a reality or an occurrence or a phenomenon that cannot be humanly explained. No one can explain how it came about. How it came about, it is a mystery. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 11 to understand this again. Romans chapter 11. Now, this is the way Apostle Paul spoke about the salvation of the Gentiles. Verse 11. 11, 11. I say then, because right from chapter 10, Apostle Paul was talking about the rejection of Israel, how they were cut off, how the Lord spoke for all day long, he has stretched forth his hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. They rejected him. And so he cut them off. Apostle Paul is speaking about how we then came in, the Gentiles. That is what he's explaining here. But at the same time, he was trying to also let us know that, that they were not cut off forever, oh, that they will still come back again. Because the calling, hallelujah, the gift and calling of God is without repentance. So from in verse 11, Romans 11, 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. 
please listen very carefully because this is where the mystery is brought out but rather through their fault salvation is come unto the gentiles for to provoke them to provoke them to jealousy now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminution of them the riches of the gentiles how much more their fullness for i speak to you gentile inasmuch as i'm the apostle of the gentiles and magnify my office if by any means i may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and myself some of them for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead for if the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches and if some of the branches be broken off that is where i am going and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root be thou we say then the branches we are broken up that i might be grafted in well because of our belief they were broken off and that started by faith be not high minded but fear for if god spare not the natural branches take it lest he also spare not the Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity but towards the goodness if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And also they, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall this which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree now the mystery is in verse 24 where we just read let me read it again and listen carefully for if thou were cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature. See the mystery now. Contrary to nature. So let's know now what is the natural thing before we will see what he did that is contrary to nature so that you will get the mystery. Because that is where the mystery is. He said, we who are wild by nature when we are grafted into it contrary to nature it is naturally impossible but contrary to nature he did it <laughs> so what is the natural thing this is the natural thing in grafting in grafting amen tap your neighbor to listen very well listen tell and listen because this is where people miss it. I'm telling you. And when God caused me to understand this, I got very excited. Then I understood all these hackers, spiritual hackers, that have hacked Christ and are portraying themselves as Christians. When they're nothing, no nothing, as far from Christ as east is from west. Naturally, in both days, there is graft naturally. You cut the branch of a citrus tree and then you scrape the side of the trunk. I've explained this here before. And then you graft it there. You gum it there. Let me use the crude language. You gum it there. And make sure there is enough nutrient here. In the root, and all the nutrients on the ground coming through the vine. There, see now, now, then after some time, from the nourishment it gets from this vine, this branch that you cut from another tree and place it there, will take root, it will receive life, and it will grow. 
with nourishment from that vine. According to nature, but when it is time for that tree to bear fruit, it will not bear the fruit of the tree from where it is receiving nourishment. It will bear the fruit of where they pluck it from. Do you understand? <laughs> eh? Now, now, that is nature. That is how nature did it. But here is a wild branch that was plucked out and grafted into the vine. This is the mystery. It receives nourishment. But there is something in that vine that happened that changed the nature of that branch so that when it is time to produce fruit, it will not produce the fruit from where it was plucked from. It will produce the fruit of that vine. That is the mystery. That is the mystery. That is the mystery. That is the mystery, church. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. Now you can understand John chapter 15. Verse 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me. You see. That beareth no fruit. He take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit. He purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clear through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a brand and is withered and may gather them and cast them into the fire and they are born. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Listen church. This is where so many of us miss it. Stop going to church. Go to Christ. Stop being a member of a church. Be a member of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that is the mystery. That is why the Bible says, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is divine. We are the branches. Israel was cut off so that we can be grabbed in where he was. Amen. Hallelujah. Why did he cause the fig tree? He caused the fig tree because he expected fruits. There was no fruit. That's why he caused it. Therefore, if you are a partaker of that mystery, what God is looking for is what? It's fruit. The fruit that you bear matters. The life that you live as a Christian now matters. That is the mystery. If a man be in Christ, He's a new creature. All the wild nature, all these are passed away. How does he do it? There is a power that is in Christ. 
Christ in you. The hope of glory. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. See the way Apostle Paul put it. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. See the way he put it. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. It's a popular scripture in the mouth of Pentecostal uh, prosperity preachers. But they don't quote this aspect. According to the power that worketh in us. There is a power that worketh in us. That power that worketh in us. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly. He said more than you ask or you even think. Why? If you abide in me and my word abide in you, he said you will ask anything and it shall be done of my father. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is the mystery. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Philippians chapter 2 Verse 13, he said, For it is God which walketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, the problem with us is many of us, hallelujah, we have not yet been partaker of that mystery of conversion. Many of us have come, join ourselves to Christ the vine, but the fruit we bear. Confirms that you are not yet in him. That you are not a partaker of that mystery. It's a mystery. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. 